Hi there, it's Cassie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and blog. Today I have five cards to share with you using the June 2018 card kit from Simon Says Stamp called Fly Me Away. This one sold out super fast, but the kit's contents are available separately. So let's take a look at what's inside. It comes with this one ounce bottle of Tim Holtz Distress Resist Spray. Candy, of course. The Tim Holtz uh, Sizzix Botanical 3D Texture Fades Embossing Folder. The Simon Says Stamp Exclusive Watercolor Sample Palette with uh, Daniel Smith colors in Quinacridone Red, Prussian Blue, and Aeolian Cobalt Yellow. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, but there is a lot of color on these little palettes, and I use them for a couple cards, as you'll see. It also comes with one Simon Says Stamp Custom Watercolor Card designed by Susie Planter Mura, a couple of envelopes in Metallic Cornflower and Metallic White, the Simon Says Stamp 6x8 set called Beautiful Flowers, which it absolutely is. It also comes with 12 single-sided sheets of 6x6 pattern paper from Mata Scrap called Fly and Scrap. Uh, and I'm just cutting off the edge there. I actually do that with my stamp sets too, so I don't have to use the, the sticky back all the time. And let's take a look at these papers real quick. They are gorgeous. I love the watercolor effect on all of them. Um, so many of them look like it's something you could possibly do with your own watercolors, but they make beautiful backgrounds and they're already done for you. So they're all one-sided like I sh said. It also comes with one sheet of tonic gold pearl mirror cardstock and Simon Says Stamp white cardstock and 120 pound and one each of 100 pound cornflower blue, smoke, and peacock. So let's go ahead and get started on our first card. For this one, I pulled out my My Favorite Things Blueprints number 24 die and my My Favorite Things in and out stitched rectangle stacks dies to make a frame. I ran that through my Big Shot off camera. And then I wanted to use the 3D texture plate from the kit, so I pull out the packaging to make sure I know how to use it correctly. These folders are much thicker than uh, the average embossing folder, so be sure to read the packaging and know how to use it with your machine. I go ahead and I stamp my image onto some Nina Solar White cardstock with some Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, all Copic marker friendly, because that's what I plan to do. And with a detailed stamp like this, I had to stamp it a few times. Now I don't stamp, or I don't color this quickly normally. I have this, I think ran four, four times as fast, just to kind of show you. I did some very simple coloring. I used, um, I had the colors up on the screen for you in case you were interested. But these kind of images with all that detail make it really easy. You can just go ahead and put your shadow lines wherever there's the markings. And, and that's what I did. I just went along with that. Um, again, super simple. I did use the three colors which you wouldn't have to do, and I don't on a car, uh, a image down the road for one of my other cards. But I thought I would give it a try, uh, just to use the three different colors and see how much dimension you could really get. And boy, these flowers are so pretty, so fun to color. Um, I can't wait to make more cards. I have lots and lots of thoughts in my head for these. So now I'm just fussy cutting out my flower, and then I gather my pieces for my card. And before I attach anything, I lined everything up in my Mini Misty, and then I'm going to stamp my sentiment. I just want to make sure that I have everything lined up correctly before I go ahead and stamp that down. Because once it's on there, it's on there. And then I'll pick up the stamp with my Mini Misty and I will pull out the other elements and I will stamp using the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. And I do it a couple times to make sure it's good and crisp and dark. And now I'm attaching my four and a quarter by five and a quarter inch piece of pattern paper to my card base, which is uh, with liquid glue, which is the Simon Says Stamp white cardstock that came in the kit. And that measured four and a quarter by 11 inches. And then I folded that in half to make a top folding A2 size card. I've attached my frame with some foam tape for dimension along with using foam tape to attach my flower. And for a final embellishment, I'm going to use some enchanted stickles, you'll see. And that is going to finish off card number one. I want to do some watercoloring for this next card, so I put some 110 pound Kansan XL watercolor paper in my stamp platform 
along with the biggest flower image from the set. I ink that up with my Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink and I continue to press down as often as possible. This paper is quite textured and the image is quite detailed, so it requires a few re-inkings and basically stamp CPR is what I like to call it. And I've heard it called that by several other artists out there too. So I just keep doing that until I get the, the image that I want and the coverage that I need. So for my watercoloring, I use the Daniel Smith palette that comes in the kit. And I spray that with a little bit of water to get the pigments flowing, and I use my number four silver watercolor brush. My goal with this image is to make them look a bit like the patterned paper in the kit, so I'm just painting and mixing. And, and to do that, I use my blue and my red to get my purple, and obviously I'm not going with uniform colors here. I am just, just putting color down and trying to be mindful of what colors would go together, obviously. So I'm keeping it just to those blues and those purples, some lighter, some darker, uh, and, and just mixing it out. And I can see why people love these Daniel Smith watercolors. They just, they blend beautifully, they color beautifully. Uh, I also know they're quite pricey, so I probably won't ever own any, but uh, they are they are definitely fun to paint with. I can see, like I said, I can see why people really love to use them. Um, and you know, honestly, I haven't actually looked into how expensive they are, but from what I what I've heard, uh, each tube can be a little bit pricey. So. Now I'm moving on to the leaves, and I'm not going to show you all the leaves that I color because it's I'm using the same process. I didn't mix anything else in there. And so once I'm done, I heat that with my heat tool because I want to fussy cut them out. And so I want to make sure they're good and, and dry because this paper is thick. And once I've decided the placement, I trim down the long edges to fit on my card panel. And before I adhere any of that, I put that all in my stamp platform so that I can stamp my sentiment. And again, I'm doing that with my Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. And that's the nice thing about these stamp platforms, especially this big one here. I can put the image in there, or I put my, my uh, card base in there with everything on it. And then I can move things if I need to, or just leave things as is before I cut anything or adhere anything. And I stamp it down a couple different times, or a couple times, just to make sure that it's good and crisp. I do love how my flowers turned out, but I want some shimmer. So I put my flowers in my splatter box, and I grab this Sukuniku Sheer Shimmer Spray and Frost. Just uh, shake up the thing and spritz it on there, and then I heat set that as well. And you can't see it on camera, but that has a lot of shimmer now. I love it. My pattern paper was already adhered to the uh, Simon Says Stamp Cornflower cardstock that came in the kit that I cut down to be a top folding A2 size card. And so now I'm adhering my flowers with the foam tape. And once that's all adhered down, I'm gonna flip it over and I will trim off the excess because that won't fit in an envelope obviously the way it is. But I wanted to make sure I knew exactly where I wanted it before I trimmed anything. And so I just trim those off and then once again, I'm going to grab those Enchanted Stickles because it just goes so well with uh, the colors. And I put a few of those on. I didn't go too crazy. And once it's dry, you can see it a little bit better, but I really like how that turned out. And that will finish off card number two. For card number three, I have another piece of the Kansan XL watercolor paper, and it's in my splatter box so that I can spray some of that Tim Holtz Distress Resist spray on it. I don't know a lot about this stuff, but I do know that it dries fairly quickly, so I didn't need to dry it with my heat tool for as long as I did, and I don't show that. Um, I do show some of the drying, but I dried it for too long. And uh, not that it matters, but because of how quickly this stuff dries, I can see why people say to clean off all of your stuff if it gets on there. So I'm going to try some ink smushing to see how this stuff reacts. And so I've grabbed some Distress Oxides in Candied Apple, Fossilized Amber, and Blueprint Sketch, and I spray those down with water. I do ink smushing quite a lot on my channel. And uh, I dry that, and I do that actually a couple times, and then I spray it again with that stuff, uh, with the Distress Resist Spray. And then I, I use the stuff that I have down there, and I 
squish it down in there again and I heat set it so I'm just trying to just see how this stuff will react. I want to see if it'll trap stuff underneath. Um, and actually what I've noticed is that what it really does is it gives a lot of texture. And I love the texture. And it actually is pretty shiny uh, in the light. So now I'm just going to grab each of the separate colors. And I right this time I've grabbed the candied apple. And I do it in that one spot and I dry it. And now I'm grabbing the blueprint sketch going over the top of that and then I dry it and I grab my box again and I spray that stuff on it again and then I let that dry and I grab the fossilized amber and I try and get that right down the middle a little bit just to see how that reacts and uh, then I dry it again. So my background I thought was just stunning so there was just so much texture it was shiny and so I decided that I wanted to stamp my flowers on white cardstock with the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink and I'm actually not going to color them. I'm going to leave them as just the white flowers. They have enough detail in them that they look like they almost have a little bit of shading already. So I fussy cut those out and I'm doing it right along the line. I'm not giving any border. And when I've decided uh, on the placement, I use my powder bag and I stamp my sentiment onto a piece of black cardstock with Versamark ink, which is a sticky ink. And then I coat that with white embossing powder and heat that until it's melted. And once I've done that, I trim it down. And this is a very thick panel with all the Distress uh, Resist Spray on it. And it's just a thick cardstock anyway. So I decide in order to keep that down, I'm going to use foam tape. Plus it gives it a little bit of dimension. And I'm not planning to do a whole lot with the front of it because I want that background to just be the star of the show. So I will put that down with my foam tape on a panel of Simon Says Stamp smoke cardstock that is top folding A2 size card. And I'm going to use some liquid glue to adhere my flowers and my sentiment. Like I said, that background I just thought was so pretty. And I think that combo of colors is probably a new favorite for me. I like the boldness of them. They're very primary. Uh, and I just thought they looked really nice together. And they blended pretty well too. So I will put that in my in my stash of ideas for colors again because I really like how those three go together. And once I have all of that adhered down, I decide I want to go and add a little bit of embellishment. Not a lot, so I grab those enchanted stickles again. And I just put a few on there. Three at the bottom, three at the top. And I'm going to leave it at that. And that's going to finish off card number three. For card number four, I've grabbed another piece of Kansan XL watercolor paper measuring five and a half by eight and a half inches, and I'm scoring it at two and a quarter on each side that measured five and a half inches. After I've done that, I will crease those folds as best I can using this thick cardstock. And now I'm going to grab my stamp platform and line up my paper at the two inch line on the vertical side of my platform. I don't want any impression on the back of my card, so I use post-it tape to mask it off at the score line. And now I'm going to position my stamp, and I'm going to ink it up with jet black ink, and I'm going to commence stamp CPR. <laughs> You've seen me do this a few times now. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm actually standing. I am standing and pushing. And um, it's just this, this paper is very textured and that stamp is very detailed. So it just takes a little bit of time. And so once I've gotten the impression that I want, I flip the paper and I shift it, shift the post-it tape to the other side and I'm gonna do it all over again. I line it up again at the two inch line there and uh, reposition that post-it tape and I will ink up my stamp once again. And it takes a few times, but I get the impression that I want. And uh, now I've cut down some pattern paper to four inches by five and a quarter inches, and I'm gonna set that off to the side. And I'm gonna watercolor just like I did for card number two, except I'm going to focus on the reds and the yellows for my flowers. I won't bore you with all the coloring since this is already a long video, so I'm gonna skip to uh, adding the shimmer spray on the images after they've been completely covered or colored. 
And I just spritz it a couple times and then I'm going to grab my heat tool and I'm going to heat set that. I just had this idea in my head for such a long time. And so um, once I've got that heated, I fussy cut all around the images, leaving a thin white border. And then I reinforce those score lines with my bone folder. And I'm going to attach my pattern paper to the inside with some liquid glue. And I, th I sat on it for a minute trying to think, okay, how am I going to keep that card closed? Well, I decided I would use a belly band. And so I take a 1 inch by 11 inch strip of black cardstock and I trim about an eighth of an inch off of the side. And I score it at 3 inches and 3 and a half inches on each side. It took some, some fussing with it, but I figured it out. So um, <laughs> there's probably a better, easier way, but this worked for me. Uh, and now that I've done it, I think I know how to do it a little bit better. So once it's all scored and ready to go, I use my powder bag because I'm going to stamp my sentiment on that black cardstock using uh, the Versamark ink. And I get it all positioned the way I want it and I decide I want another little sentiment on top of that. Get it all ready to go, use the powder bag, and then I stamp my sentiment with the Versamark ink, like I said. And then I'm going to coat it with the white embossing powder. Once that's coated, I will heat that with my heat tool. I love that black on white, or white on black. And then I'm going to use a, a fourth inch score tape and I'm going to wrap that belly band around the card and I'm going to loosely attach it so that it'll be easy for the recipient to take off. And that will finish off card number four. For card number five, I wanted to do something that I saw Sherry Carroll do from Simon Says Stamp on their channel. And uh, she did this with the 3D texture folder, so I wanted to give it a try. So she took watermark ink all over the flat side of the plate. Uh, in this case, I'm using Versamark ink. And then she spritzed her cardstock with water on both sides. Mine is Simon Says Stamp Peacock. And then she ran that through the big shot off camera. And then I'm going to heat it to dry it off. It's such a beautiful effect. It really makes that image pop as if uh, the 3D itself didn't do enough, right? So then I stamped one of the flowers onto some Nina Solar White cardstock. This is the 80 pound version with some Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. And then I stamped the sentiment along one of the sides as well. Sorry, I'm doing this off camera. I don't know what my problem was. Uh, and then I did some Copic coloring. My base color is Y06. My shading, as you'll see, is Y35. And then I used the colors R85 and R11 to do the stamen on the inside. Once I get all of that colored, I'm going to fussy cut it. And I'm going to fussy cut it right along the line. I'm not going to use a white border. I typically do, but in this case, I didn't really want the white to stand out too much. So I cut it right along the line. I just thought the pink would be a cute little color for the inside. Not that I've ever seen a flower with pink stamen, but. So atta to attach my panel, I'm using foam tape and uh, I'm attaching that to a top folding A2 size card of the Peacock cardstock as well. And then I'm going to use some liquid glue to attach my flower and my sentiment. And once I get that attached, I do have a lot of excess hangover, so I'm going to turn that over and I'm going to trim it off. And that'll complete card number five. So let's go ahead and take a look at the five cards that I made today. I would love to hear which one was your favorite. Thank you so much for always liking my videos and subscribing to my channel. And as always, thank you so much for stopping by.